Hey guys, welcome back to Living in the Mom Lane or welcome if you're new here, my name is Mandy. Today's What's for Dinner video is a little bit different from my usual What's for Dinner videos that you may have seen in the past. Today's video, I am sharing meals with you that are super, super cheap. Meals that will allow you to stretch your grocery budget a little bit thinner. There are a lot of people in America that have lost their jobs already. There are a lot of small business owners that they don't know if they're still gonna be in business come two, three months down the road from now. We just don't know what tomorrow brings. So I put together some recipes. Some are from the internet. One of them my mother-in-law gave me and one I made up on my own, kind of going off of the recipe my mother-in-law gave me. So these meals are super cheap and I will share the breakdown of the cost for each meal. When I was adding up the cost for everything, I went by Walmart prices. I was gonna do Aldi, but then I got to thinking not everybody has an Aldi in their area. Most everyone has a Walmart close by and they can shop at a Walmart. So that is the, the prices from Walmart. And I am in Florida, so your Walmart may have things even cheaper than my Walmart, or they might be a little more expensive. If you have an Aldi in your area, or a Save-A-Lot, or whatever type of grocery store you have that might be even cheaper than Walmart, by all means, shop at that grocery store so that you can stretch the dollar even more. Now, these meals, they are not keto, they are not your Mediterranean diet, they are not your typical healthy meals. These meals are meals that you can put on the table to feed your family. When we fall on hard times, it's not always about how healthy the meal is. It is feeding your kids, feeding your family, making sure they don't go to bed hungry. And that is what this video is all about. So if you have lost your job, if getting a little emotional. <laughs> if you have already lost your job or your hours have been cut, I pray that things get better for you and we are all in this together and that is why I wanted to make this video was to help you. So after each meal, I will get back on and I will tell you the breakdown. I'm sorry. I will tell you the breakdown of each meal, how much each thing cost. I did not add in the spices when I was figuring up the prices for each meal because a lot of the spices in these meals are things that you probably already have in your spice cabinet or in your pantry or whatever. If it's something, I know one of the recipes calls for bay leaves. If you don't have bay leaves, do not run out to the store and buy bay leaves. Just use basil or completely omit that. It's not gonna make that big of a difference, okay? If it calls for a spice that you just completely do not have, don't worry about it. I'm sure it'll taste good. Add a little bit of spice of something else that you have, just get creative. So again, I hope that this video helps you. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments if you liked it, if you want to see more videos like this where I get the, the meals as cheap as we can get them, let me know and I will work on that um, because right now times are tough and it may get worse before it gets better. But like I said, we're all in this together. I want to use this platform to help you if you are struggling financially, if you need budgeting advice, if you need advice on meals, what you can fix to feed your family that are cheap meals, then you know, message me, email me. I have my email down in the description all the time. You can find me on Instagram. You can private message me there whatever you wanna do, if you need help, I will try to give you some budgeting advice. I will try to help you however I can. So let's go ahead and get started on this video. Our first meal is the Great Depression casserole. What you need for this is four slices of bacon, bologna, a bell pepper, onion, garlic, pork and beans, chili with beans, and cheddar cheese. 
So the first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees and then you're going to cook your bacon and the instruction says to grease a three quart deep baking dish which I didn't do because I'm using my Dutch oven and I'm gonna do it all in this pot. So you wanna cook your bacon until it's nice and brown and crisp, probably about five minutes. So while the bacon is cooking, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut up my bologna and you wanna cut that into half inch cubes. And as you can see there, I've already cut up my onion and garlic. Now that the bacon is done, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out of the pot and just chop it up and then I'll add it back into the Dutch oven and add in my bell pepper, onion, and garlic, and you wanna let that cook for about another five minutes until the vegetables begin to turn translucent. Once the vegetables are cooked, you're gonna add in your bologna and cook for another five minutes or until the edges begin to turn brown. And then you're gonna stir in your pork and beans and your chili. The instruction says to pour this mixture into a baking dish, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just leaving it in the Dutch oven. It's less dishes to have to wash. So before I put this in the oven, I wanna top it with the cheese, and then you're gonna bake it for about 20 minutes until it's bubbly and the cheese is melted. I decided to go ahead and make some cornbread. So I'm just using the Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix, and this is a, probably about 48 cents from Aldi. So I have my notes here and I'm gonna tell you the breakdown of each meal. The depression casserole, um, the bacon, again, you only use four slices, so that worked out to be about a dollar. The green pepper is 76 cents. The onion worked out to be 28 cents if you buy a three pound bag of onions. The garlic was about 48 cents. The pork and beans was 50 cents. Chili with beans worked out to be $1.36. The bologna was $1.44. And the cheddar cheese, I did half of an eight ounce block of cheese that worked out to be $1.04. So the total for the Great Depression meal was $6.86. That meal will feed up to eight people. So per serving was 86 cents. That was a really good priced meal. And that meal was one of those stick to your ribs kind of meals. It was really good for us. We were able to get two meals out of it because we're only a family of four and you could probably stretch it. Like if you say you have a bigger family, but you have little kids that they really don't eat that much, you may be able to stretch it to feed 10, maybe even 12 people. If you can afford it, then try to add like a little side salad to it or maybe have some cornbread with it, something like that, just to give you a little extra something to eat. Our next meal is old fashioned goulash. What you need for this is ground beef, yellow onions, garlic, water, beef broth, tomato sauce, diced tomatoes, Italian seasoning, oregano, bay leaves, Worcestershire sauce, salt, garlic powder, pepper, elbow macaroni, which I did not have elbow macaroni, and cheddar cheese. The first thing you wanna do is brown your hamburger meat and I'm using my large Dutch oven again. It's a one pot meal, which I absolutely love those kind of meals. So after your hamburger meat is browned, you're gonna then add in your onion and saute until they're tender about five minutes. 
Then you're gonna add two cups of water and one cup of beef broth, along with the tomato sauce, tomatoes, garlic, bay leaves, Worcestershire sauce, and seasonings. Now, I did not have enough tomato sauce, but I did have a small can of tomato juice. So I used the tomato juice in place of the tomato sauce. Once you've added all of your seasonings, you wanna stir it very well, place the lid on the pot, and you wanna cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes. You're then gonna add in your elbow macaroni, and you wanna stir it very well. Put the lid back on the pot and simmer until the pasta is al dente, about four to five minutes. The pasta will cook a bit more whenever you remove it from the heat, so you wanna make sure you don't cook the pasta too long. So the goulash was really good. That was one of my favorites this week. So the breakdown on that, onions, that was 56 cents, garlic, 48 cents. The hamburger meat, now in the video, I was using Butcher Box because that is what I have on hand. But when I did the prices, I looked up at Walmart, their prices. And I looked it up for 73% lean beef and it was a 10 pound roll of, um, or a 10 pound tube of hamburger meat. That worked out because you use two pounds, um, that worked out to be $4.30. The broth was about 42 cents. Tomato sauce was $1.28. Diced tomatoes, $1.28. The cheese, again, I was using half of an eight ounce block, so that was $1.04. The macaroni was about half of a box and that was 41 cents. The total cost of that meal was $9.77. This would serve about eight people, or again, if you have smaller kids, you could probably stretch it to 10 people. Um, for eight people, it was $1.22 per serving, and for 10 people, it would be 98 cents. This meal was one of those good home-cooked comfort food type meals. So I just have a whole chicken, and I'm gonna be using butter, carrots, onion, rosemary, and I'm using the rosemary only because I already had it in the refrigerator and I didn't want it to go bad. I'm also using some rubbed sage and pink Himalayan salt. So I'm just gonna cut up the veggies and kind of do it like a turkey. I'm just gonna stuff the cavity of the chicken with the onion and the carrots and then put some rosemary down in the dish. So now I'm just gonna take the butter and I'm gonna rub it all over the outside of the chicken. And I also like to put the butter up under the skin of the chicken. This helps the chicken breast be really juicy and not dry out as easily. After I have the butter all over the chicken, I'm then going to sprinkle some of the rubbed sage all over and then sprinkle some of the pink Himalayan salt. And I'll cover it with aluminum foil and bake it in a 350 degree oven until the temperature of the chicken is 165 degrees. For the sides for this meal, I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes and green beans.
I always use bacon grease in my green beans. It just gives the green beans a lot of flavor and it's really good. So here I am checking the temperature of the chicken. It is not quite done yet. So what I'm gonna do is put it back in the oven without the aluminum foil so the outside can brown a little bit. Okay, so for the chicken and mashed potatoes meal, um, we ended up using about half of the chicken. My kids each had a chicken leg and my husband and I, we had just one of the breast. So for a five to eight pound chicken, it was $5.47, but we only used half of it for this meal. So it, that is $2.74. The potatoes, it's really hard to get an exact price. I was looking at a 10 pound bag of potatoes. So that worked out to be about 98 cents, maybe a little more. The green beans, I used two cans and that was $1.76. So for that meal, the total was $5.48. You got about four servings out of that. We did have a little bit of leftovers of the mashed potatoes and a little bit of leftovers of the green beans and that we could use for lunch or something like that the next day. So for four people for that meal, it was $1.37 per serving. So this recipe, I kind of made it up going by the recipe that my mother-in-law gave me. What you need is one pound of hamburger meat, two packages of ramen noodles, one onion, garlic powder, cumin, and half a block of uh, cheddar cheese. So what you're gonna do first is brown your hamburger meat, add in your garlic powder and your cumin, and then you'll add in your onion as well and let the onion become translucent. Now, as far as the ramen noodles, this meal would have tasted a lot better if I had beef ramen noodles and not chicken flavor noodles, or if you had original ramen noodles, but chicken is all I had, so that is what I am using. So now you wanna break up the ramen noodles into your pan, and then you're gonna add in the two cups of water and your seasoning packet and you just wanna let that cook until the noodles are done and let some of the water cook out if you don't want it to be as soupy or you can leave it soupy if you want. Once your noodles are done, you're gonna add in the cheddar cheese and mix it up really good until the cheese is nice and melted. We served this meal with a side of broccoli and I just used frozen broccoli, which is super cheap. All right, so for the beef and the ramen noodles, the beef worked out to be about $2.15. Again, we're still using that 10 pound roll of hamburger meat that I priced out for the goulash. Um, so that was about $2.15. The ramen noodles was 30 cents. The onion was about 28 cents. The cheese, again, using half a block, half of an eight ounce block of cheese, that was $1.04. So for that meal, the total was $4.29. Um, you could probably serve about six, Again, if you have smaller kids and they don't really eat that much, you may be able to stretch it to eight, but six would probably be the best. And so that was, um, again, $4.29 for the entire meal. Per serving was 82 cents. Now, I used chicken flavor ramen noodles because that's all that I had. Amelia, both of the girls actually really liked that meal. I do think that it would taste even better if I had actual beef ramen noodles or maybe like the original ramen noodles, but it was still good. This recipe is from my mother-in-law. What you need is a bag of mixed vegetables. I'm using what I have on hand, which is peas and corn. You also need two packages of ramen noodles, the original flavor, or you could use beef flavor, one onion, some garlic salt or garlic powder, and one pound of hamburger meat. 
I am using the chicken flavored ramen noodles because that's what I have on hand. And I'm also using the leftover chicken from the whole chicken that we baked a few days ago. The first thing you wanna do is boil two cups of water, add in your ramen noodles. I like to go ahead and break it up just so it's easier for the kids to eat it. Add in your two packets of seasoning and your onions and let that cook until your onions are translucent. And then you're going to add in your frozen mixed vegetables. Mix that all up really well. You can add in some garlic salt, garlic powder, whatever you're wanting to use. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in the cut up chicken. Mix that up really well. So I'm just gonna put a lid on it and let the chicken get warmed. And the last meal, the chicken and ramen noodles. So we're using the leftovers of the, chick the whole chicken that I cooked in the oven a couple days ago. And for this meal, the chicken, half of it, $2.79, or I'm sorry, $2.74. Um, frozen, you can get like a bag of frozen peas and carrots. Uh, that would be about 80 cents if you did the Great Value brand. For the ramen noodles, I actually had to look at Sam's Club because when I tried to find it on Walmart, because they're out of stock, I couldn't find the price of what Walmart charges. So I had to look at the price for Sam. So that is buying it in bulk, but it worked out to be about 30 cents for both packages of the ramen noodles. Your onion is about 28 cents. The total on this meal was $4.12. Again, it will serve about six people. You may be able to stretch it again if you have smaller children and they don't really eat that much or you serve it with a side salad or cornbread or biscuits, rolls, whatever you wanna serve it with. For six people, that would be about 69 cents per serving. So that was a really good price as well. So the total of all five of these meals, $30.52, so round it up, say $31, to feed anywhere from six to eight people. Not too bad, not too bad at all. So like I said earlier, I did not add in the spices when I did the figuring of the prices because most of the spices probably already have in your spice cabinet or your pantry. And if you don't have that spice, you can always substitute it with something else. So the cheapest meal out of all of those per serving chicken and ramen noodles at 69 cents per serving. So not too shabby. Um, my favorite meal out of all of those was probably the goulash. I really liked the goulash. That was really good. The kids' favorite was probably the chicken and ramen noodles. They did like the beef and ramen noodles, but honestly, they actually liked all of them. They didn't really complain about any of the meals. So win for me. So that wraps up this week's What's for Dinner. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see more videos, more what's for dinners like this, where I am really getting the grocery budget low and trying to just make very cheap, cheap meals so that you can feed your family, let me know down in the comments. And like I said, if you need any type of budgeting advice or just wanna talk, um, find me on Instagram, email me, message me down here in the comments, whatever you want to do. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.